Shabbat Shalom. Happy Sabbath. Happy Passover. Happy New Year. It's 2.01 a.m. Las Vegas time. And we give all glory to our Heavenly Father in Heaven, who gave His only begotten Son, Christ, to die for our sins. And who left us the Holy Spirit. that we need in this world in order to do good deeds and to provide love and goodness and joy and happiness and everything else that goes and comes with the Holy Spirit that blesses us and blesses the entire world. Today's date is Saturday, April 16th. We're going live right now, not a pre-recorded, but we're going to talk about how Christ died on Passover. Christ was crucified on Passover. Christ died for your sins on April 14th, the first day of the new year. The proof is in the scripture. The scripture tells us that we should study to show ourselves approved. And my question is to you. How many of you, or let's not count the populace, but are you studying to show yourself approved? Or are you not? I don't know how long this show is going to be today. But when you get a revelation from the Lord and you get something from the Lord in an instant, you got to share it. It's like having hot dinner, hot lunch or breakfast, and you want it served when it's hot. As soon as you get it, you got to share it. I just got some life changing information By the blessing of the Lord. And I yes, yes, I have the Passover punch with me right now. But I'm not drunk off of this. I'm drunk in the Holy Spirit. In fact, this is my third glass. And I feel no buzz. This is my fourth. This is my fourth. Fourth glass. And I feel no buzz. But I am in the spirit. The scripture says, be drunk not with wine, but be drunk in the Holy Spirit. Be drunk in the Spirit of the Lord. So we got some things to talk about today. And you could be anywhere in the world tonight, but you decided to be here today. And we decided to be here today. And I decided to be here today, even though I'm in Sin City right now itself. On a Friday Eve, if you will, going on to a Saturday. Me and the missus could be at the club right now. Doing what it do, doing the new moonwalk, and and just having a good old jolly time. But we sitting back at the house, enjoying one another's company, eating good food, relaxing, and we're getting into this word on a on a Sabbath day at two a.m. in Las Vegas, when the world is being the world right now. But the world has some some information that the world needs right now. So whoever is in tuning into this show right now, your life will be changed right now, today. So if you can stay to the end, you will be blessed. If we can get to the music later, 
if we can get to the music later, because this is going to be a hot one tonight. We're going to calm it down. We're going to try to, you know, balance the show if we can get to that. I don't know if we can get to that. We're going to see how it do. We're going to see what it do. The title of the show is called They Killed Christ on April 14th. Proof is in the scripture. The picture that you're looking at right now with the blood and thorns, they killed Christ and they put thorns around his head. If that doesn't touch your heart in some way, someone who was without sin, who came here and loved his own and his own loved him not, but yet put thorns around his head. As a crown. If that doesn't touch your heart. I don't know what else will. Someday somebody. Is going to pick up the Bible. They're going to believe it. And they're going to put us all to shame. The Bible is in your phone. It's at your crib. It's at every hotel you go to through in the top drawer. It's all around you. But yet people have a hard time believing it. People have a hard time picking it up, trying to show, study to show thyself approved. Not only to study to show thyself approved, but to have and build a relationship with the Lord. When you meet someone, you go on a date and you want to whoop de whoop do what it do. You want to get to know that person. You want to... Go out to eat. You want to get close to that person. And you want to do more with that person. In order to get close with that person, you have to know who they are. You have to know something of them. They have to know something of you. And to get closer and closer, you got to know some secrets. You got to know some history. You got to know the future. You got to know the present. You got to get a little bit of this and that and this and that. You got to know their name, where they from, what school did you go to, what do you like to do, what's your favorite color, you know, etc., etc. The list goes on. There's an, a full extensive list of things that you can never stop learning about someone in a lifetime. But the problem is we are so selfish and so lazy that we don't have the, 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 the desire to even build a relationship with the person who loves you. That's selfishness to be loved and not give love back to give love back is like, oh, I want to know more about you. I want to know more about uh, uh, this and that and this and that. You have to open up that book. You have to read it. You have to watch videos and listen to good music. Put a good circle around yourself. The new year is now. So what are you going to do now? 2021 is over. Our new year starts now. So what are you going to start doing this year? Now. Food prices are going up. Rent is going up. Gas is going up. And it's not getting any cheaper. They didn't give you no stimulus. Your job is tripping. What are you going to do? Will you count on the Lord now? Would you pray to him now? Would you try to build a relationship now because you need him now? Or would you want to do it because you didn't? We need him every day, but are you doing it because you need him now? Because you're trying to get your situation right? But he was trying to love you before you, when everything was going good. Now you need to put food on the table. Now you need that money for rent. Now you need that money for this. Where were you before when everything was going good? Do you pray in the morning when you wake up and say, thank you, Lord, for waking me up? Do you pray at night and say, Lord, forgive me for my sins and say the Our Father's Prayer and pray for others and pray for yourself before you go to bed? Do you pray throughout the day or have you become lax? And if you have, it's OK because it's a new year and you can start today to be afresh. Spring is about being afresh. It's spring forward. So spring forward in the right direction. Do some spring cleaning. Renovate your temple. Renovate your mind. Renovate the things you're saying. Renovate your body. Renovate your diet. 
Everybody gonna have to renovate their diet soon. The way prices are going up, we all gonna be eating soup. Nobody can afford no meat. Nobody can afford no bread, no cereal, no cake. It's to the point where they're rationing out food now. Georgia, I just got word from fam in Georgia that there's a food shortage out now, particularly in Atlanta. And with the shipments, it's going to get even worse. But that's not the subject of the matter right now, even though we can get into that. If we have more sleepless, sleepless nights in prayer. There will be fewer souls to have a sleepless internal night in hell. We don't pray enough. Is the world crucified to you or does it fascinate you? I'm asking. Is the world crucified to you or does it fascinate you? There's three type of people that are in everybody. There's three type of people. The first one is who we think we are. That's the first one. The first one is who we think we are. There's three types of people in every single person in the world. The first person is who we think we are. The second is is the one that other people think we are. And the third is the one the Heavenly Father knows we are. Are the things you live in for worth Christ dying for? Don't don't send a message and tell me personally. Answer the question to yourself. Are the things you living for worth Christ dying for? I want to get into this scripture. Because I want to show you the evilness of this all. Before we get into the scripture, I just want to share with you some of the basic things that... Is in the forefront that you you've already um, may have seen that you already may know, but just as a refresher on the touch up. If you Google when is Passover, if you just type when or you just type the word Passover. What you'll see is that Passover begins on April 15th on Friday, April 15th, and that it ends on Saturday April 23rd. I don't know if you heard me, but I'm going to say it again. When you look up Passover and you type it in to see which date it starts and it ends on. You're going to see that Passover begins on the evening of Friday, April 15th, and it ends on the evening of April 23rd. There is something that Satan likes to do. He mixed the truth with the lie, but when you mix truth with a lie, it's still a lie. Whether it's a half truth, a speck of truth, a speck of a lie, a speck of a lie with 95% truth is still a lie. 99% percent truth and one percent lie is still a lie 
99% of a lie and 1% truth is still a lie. 50% truth and 50% lie is still a lie. 60% truth and 40% lie is still a lie. No matter how you mix it, if there's a dab of a lie, it's the automatic lie. And the lie in this that I want to point out, that we're on this. Again, I'm going to say it again. When you look up Passover and you see the date, the date that the world tells us is that Passover is on April 15th on a Friday and that it ends on April 23rd on a Saturday. When you go into scripture, my friend, ladies and gentlemen, we go into scripture. What you will find, I'm gonna go, we're going to go to it, just one second here. You will find that in the word, it tells us, at Exodus 12, verse 18, in the first month on the 14th day of the month at evening, ye shall eat unleavened bread until one and twentieth day of the month at evening. The scripture tells you and I that we eat Passover on the 14th, but the world switched the time and said that Passover is on the 15th. So those who are into it and believe the world and are friends with the world are celebrating on the wrong days. And they're ending it, it on the wrong day. Why is that important? Because it's extremely important. They call the 15th Good Friday and it is not the day when Christ died. If Christ died on a Friday and you celebrate his resurrection on the Sunday, that's not three days. Because you don't count Friday because the full 24 hours hasn't passed. So if he died on a Friday, which you call Good Friday, then you have Saturday and you have Sunday. That only leaves you two days. So they, you're one day short from his resurrection. Christ burned in, in hell and died for our sins and had the keys and opened up the gates of hell. And he was there for three days. But what the world is telling you is two days. They have told you that Christ died on a Friday. So they call it Good Friday. And they tell you that he rose on the Sunday. Well, my friends, these are not three days. Count the days from Friday through Sunday. Because people go to church when? On Sunday. Christ died on April 14th. Passover is the same year every year, and it ends the same year on the same day every year. So Christ died on a Wednesday. Therefore, when we count the days, we don't count Wednesday because that's not 24 hours. He died on a Wednesday. You count Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's three days. So Saturday would be the Sabbath day. But these Catholic Romanian priests way back when decided to change the calendar. They changed the Sabbath day from Saturday to Sunday, worshiping the sun god, worshiping uh, uh, the sun itself and worshiping the Greek deity, also known as Satan, the Apollo. Or the devil. And they mix and mangle the holidays to confuse you. Again, when you go to Exodus chapter 12, verse 18, in the first month on the 14th day of the month at evening, ye shall eat unleavened bread until the one and 20th day of the month, until the 21st, until the 14th, until the 21st. Oh, my goodness.
pardon me, I got the days mixed up. Um, Passover was on, uh, what was that? Thursday, we celebrated it. Was that Thursday? Let me look at the calendar. But you get my idea. You see what I'm saying? Let me, let me just double check. It's late. One second. I want to say we did. That was. Let me double check it just to be sure. Okay, that was Thursday. But either way, you count three days from the day of the 14th. So it is what it is. That's Sunday. So Christ would have had to die on the on the the 14th. Either way, he died on the 14th. And three days from that, you get Sunday. But either way, you know, they still worship in other gods. Now, I'm going to prove to you in Scripture that he died on the 14th. I'm going to prove to you in Scripture. But before we get to that, I want to uh, share with you all the actual dishes that you, you can eat on Passover. Okay, we know that unleavened bread is one. Now, your unleavened bread, again, could be a homemade cracker, could be a store-bought cracker, as long as it doesn't have any yeast, any leaven, no baking soda. Okay, and it can be, uh, you know, that and... You know, you want to have some type of wine or some type of grape juice uh, with that. And we'll get into that a little bit later on why you should have that with that. But just a quick refresher. The, just think of the Last Supper. And we'll get into the Last Supper a little bit shortly. Okay. Um, but there's some things that you shouldn't eat. And I re I'm, I'm guilty of this also. Because when we're first finding out about this information, we just want to do with the right thing. We're, we're, we're trying to please the Lord and we want to do the right thing. And when I first got into celebrating the Passover, I looked at the German ways. I looked at the Russian ways of them celebrating it. So I was like, man, I, I, I need to make matzo ball soup. I need to, you know, get challah bread, which I didn't get no challah bread because I knew it had yeast in it. But some of the stuff that they eat, I was trying to follow their traditions. Nah, 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 we don't do that. You cook what you cook. Like me and the missus this year, we made Jamaican beef patties. We wanted to do some African style. Fufu, macaroni and cheese, you know what I mean? Smoked okra and, and, and tomatoes and, and um, Vidalia onions and, and uh, asparagus mix hooked up. You know, cabbage, corn on the cob. All, an assortment of things. But without yeast, of course. You know, if you're, if you're a person that like Mexican, you want to do tacos or quesadillas, you know, that you could do it like that. If you want to do like grilled lamb, roasted lamb off the grill, hot off the grill and spaghetti noodles, you know what I mean? You could do it. That's different. You know what I mean? But holding on to those German or Russian ways, those Euro European ways is not authentic. There's nothing wrong with eating that if that's all you have. I'm not trying to down you. But I'm just saying these are the same people that Revelation chapter 2 verse 9 talk about. And these are the same people that Revelation chapter 3 verse 9 talk about. When they celebrate the Passover, this is the type of stuff that they're eating. They have something called the Passover cedar plate. And this cedar plate is supposed to be simple. Symbolic to uh, 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 the, the Passover, to emphasize the ideas of the people of Israel. So what they have, right, they have like six different dishes on this little plate that coincides with the six pointed star. And each of these six items are supposed to, quote unquote, Play a significance in retelling the story of the Passover. The scripture didn't tell us th to do this. Like the, how they're doing this. But, but listen to this. Right. Um, in fact, they have a seventh uh, meal instead of the six. 
So they have a classic uh, matzo, like those little matzo balls, right? And then they'll have a shank bone, like just the bone itself, just the lamb bone. They'll have a hard boiled egg, horseradish, a onion, parsley, and they'll have challa bread. Now the challa bread that they have has yeast in it. It rises. It looks like a like a pretzel bun, like a woven brun, uh, bun. Now, of course, parsley is a bit of herb, so they're okay with that. But th- there's no eggs. There's no horseradish. Um, there's no, I mean, come on. They're, they're not doing it right. So listen to this. They said the bitter herb is to symbolize the bitterness and the harshness of slavery that the Hebrews endured during Egypt. In Ashkenazi tradition, we know that in Genesis, under the tribe of Gomer, you have the Ashkenazi Jews who are Gentiles. They say that they eat something called cherozet. Which is a sweet brown mixture that's supposed to represent the mortar, the mortar and brick that was used by us black slaves to build the storehouses and the pyramids of Egypt. But that's what they're eating. The scriptures don't tell us to eat no cherizette. This is what they decided to do. They eat something called carpus, which is another uh, vegetable other than like uh, bitter herbs. And with this carpus, they dip this carpus into salt water. And they say that the salt water is supposed to be symbolic and a reminder of the pain felt by the Hebrew slaves. How evil is that? The scripture didn't tell us to dip no uh, parsley into no salt water and the salt water is supposed to represent the tears. This is what they're doing. So if you're doing this, you need to stop this and repent now because this is not the way. We're not going to get into all of this, but you can get the synopsis of what's going on. They're all wrong and they're all out of whack. I want to share with you some more Passover scriptures on why we celebrate Passover and how Christ died on April 14th, how that proof is indeed in the scripture. Before we get into depth about how Christ died on the day of Passover, I just want to share with you a little bit briefly why we celebrate Passover. Another reason, there's multiple reasons why we celebrate Passover, which is also known as the, the Feast of Dedication. When you go to the book of Maccabees, we'll read at chapter 6, and in this chapter, we're going to read just a little bit about some of the evilness that we were surrounded by. During the past time, what they did to our kingdom was complete evil.
So we're going to go to chapter 6. In the Apocrypha. And reading from Maccabees. Starting at verse 3. The coming of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people. The people that they're talking about in this scripture is us, the quote unquote slaves at this time for defiling the most high. For the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles. This picture that they are portraying is when the Gentiles took over our holy temples what I'm about to read to you is some of the things that was going on in our temples that they took away from us when they had us in slavery. The coming in of this mischief was sore and grievous to the people, for the temple was filled with riot and reveling by the Gentiles, who dollied with harlots and had to do with women within the circuit of the holy places. Let me stop. They were having sex with whores, with prostitutes inside of our churches, inside of our temples. And besides that, brought in things that were not lawful. So anything that you can think of that is not lawful, according to the scripture, they brought in to our temple. Whether it was stolen goods, whether it was another man's wife that they had, whether it was... You know, baby mama, drama, whatever, you name it, they brought it in there. The altar was also filled with profane, profane things which the law forbiddeth. They wrote on our altars, spray painted on our altars, put pig's blood on our altars, had all type of cuss words and all that other stuff on our altars while we were in slavery. Neither was it lawful for a man to keep the Sabbath days or ancient fasts or to profess himself to be a Jew at all. You live in a world now where celebrities can't even profess themselves to be a Jew. Like Cam Newton, Nick Cannon and the boys. You can't even talk about true history. And the only person that can get away with it here and there is Farrakhan because he's a part of the brotherhood. And he's an outsider claiming not to be a Jew, but claiming to be a Muslim talking about the Jews, which he is a part of that family also. You couldn't claim to be a Jew. You wasn't able to keep the Sabbath and you wasn't even able to fast. This was all the while before the Exodus. And in the days of the king's birth, every month they were brought by bitter constraint to eat of the sacrifices. So every month the king celebrated his birthday. And when the king celebrated his birthday, they made sacrifices to the king and to their gods and they made us eat their food. You're a slave and you can't pick and choose. You remember how great, 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 great grandma and grandpa couldn't pick and choose. And we had to eat chitlins. We had to eat pig feet. We had to eat the scraps and we made it work. And now we call it soul food and people love it. But we eat in the wrong things because Leviticus tell us the right and wrong what we should and should not eat. Now we know when we still eating the same thing. Y'all still eating shrimp. Y'all still eating shrimp. Still eating lobster bisque. Call yourself a pescatarian and the word itself is pest. The word itself is a pest. And you have the audacity to claim that rank. To claim that order. Of word choice and call yourself a pescatarian. Yes, I eat no red meat, 
but I eat shrimp, scallops, lobster, oyster, clams, octopus, blowfish, etc. Catfish too. You're not even supposed to eat catfish. It has no scales. Y'all still eating catfish and it has no scales. What are you going to do this year? Catfish are bottom feeders of the sea. Bottom fishes of the ponds. Bottom fishes of the lakes. Bottom fishes of the rivers. They will eat a dead body. They will eat anything. They are the cleaners of the sea. To call yourself a king or a queen, but you eating shrimp, lobster, clams, you are not fit to be one. Because that is the lowest of the lows. You are better than that. We're talking about roaches and spiders of the sea. And this is what you're eating. When it comes to the children of Israel, no, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't do that. When it comes to the children of the Most High, no, 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 we don't do that. I'm not talking about only bloodline. I'm talking about the strangers to every race. If you headed to that way of righteousness, this is you too. We all a family in this. Shrimp, oysters, all that stuff got to go. They made us eat their sacrifices. When they cooked them hog maws and they cooked that pig with the apple in the mouth, they made us eat it. And we had no choice if you're starving. A pregnant mother with a baby on the way is going to eat it because she's starving and the baby got to eat. They made us eat it. And now people love to eat it. People love to eat it so much. Even when the bacon's eleven ninety nine, you still gonna buy it, knowing that it's bad for you, knowing that what the scripture says about it, you still eating it, and the price is still high. Price is higher than the combo, and you still eating it. <laughs> but every day on the king's birth, every month. They were brought by British constraint to eat of the sacrifices. And when the feast of Bacchus was kept, how many of y'all know who Bacchus is? Bacchus is a Greek god who was over wine and over sex and orgies and all that. Do y'all know when you go to Caesar's Palace, they have a restaurant called the Bacchus Buffet? I would never go there. And I looked at the buffet online and all you know checked it out and it looks pretty good but i would never go knowing that the scripture says this knowing that it's called the bacchus buffet i ain't going me and the wife we ain't going we'll find another buffet to go to we don't need to go to that one this was the same the same sacrifice they are sacrificing this meat to it says and when the feast of bacchus was kept the Jews were compelled to go in procession to Bacchus, carrying ivy. So they made us carry ivy to this fake Greek god, Bacchus, as a sacrifice. And don't they have all these colleges that people are proud to be of now? They call it Ivy League colleges. Isn't there rituals that go on now called hazing rituals where you got to drink? There's white men that could drink that I know that could drink a beer in two seconds. That could drink a beer in two to two to four seconds tops. And they'll put their life on it. They'll put their car their <laughs> They'll put anything on it. They'll put they'll bet you with, with, with everything you got on and then some that they'll finish that can in two to four seconds tops. Moreover, we have verse eight. There went out a decree to the neighbor of cities of the heathen by suggestion of Ptolemy against the Jews that they should observe the same fashions and to be partakers of their sacrifices. And whoso would not conform themselves to the manner of the Gentiles shall be put to death. They had us to the point where they were they had us serving their gods. And if we wouldn't do it, they would kill us. 
Did you know this? Did you know this is why one of the reasons we celebrate Passover, when we finally got up out of there, after building their temples, after serving their gods, after them making us eat the stuff we didn't want to eat, when we just wanted to be holy, go with our family and just go about our day and be creative and eat and, and have pleasures and travel. They had us doing up all this. But why did we get into this situation? Because we kept defiling the most high. So the Lord said, I'll hand you over. I'll hand you over to that which you say you so, so-called so love. Then a man might have seen the present misery. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom had whom they had openly led round about the city. The babies handing at their breasts, they cast them down headlong from the wall. And others had to run together in caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. Let me read this again because I don't know if you caught that. They had it where the women were... Ch- Throwing, they had the women throwing off their newborn children. If they found out that you had circumcised your child, circumcision wasn't a thing because they didn't care about keeping the, the, the penis clean. They didn't care about, you know, that they were into all type of stuff. So they didn't care about that stuff. If they found out that a woman had her child circumcised. And they found out they would make the woman throw the baby off a balcony. Head first. For there were two women brought who had circumcised their children, whom when they had openly led round about the city. That means that they had their baby circumcised and they had the babies openly round about. People saw their stuff. The babies handing at their breasts. Even while the baby, they're telling you how young the babies are. They just got circumcised. You got to circumcise them at a certain age. The babies were still breastfeeding. It says they cast them down headlong from the wall. They cast them down head first when they found out they were circumcised. And others that had run together in caves nearby to keep the Sabbath day secretly. We had to keep the Sabbath day secretly. Being discovered by Philip were all burnt together because they had made a conscience to help themselves for the honor of the most sacred day. When they found out you were celebrating the Sabbath day, they burned you. (coughs) Pardon me. I'm not going to read all of this, but you get a, a mild example of some of the stuff that we had to go through. And when we got out of this exodus... We celebrated this exodus in its maximum possibility. You have Christmas, you have Halloween, you have Valentine's Day, you got Memorial Day, Mother's Day, Dad's Day, and all the 4th of July, and all these holidays. It's a one day type of deal. But when it comes to this Passover, when it comes to Hanukkah, the Lord do it up. The world does a one day feast or one day type of thing. But this is a seven day extravaganza. And this is something that's going to be in our lifetime and it's something that's going to be a forever thing in heaven, in this world, in the world to come. I'm going to share with you some scriptures that will help you understand why we celebrate Passover.
Leviticus chapter 23, verse 4 through 8. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In the fourteenth day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. And on the fifteenth day of the same month is the feast of unleavened bread unto the Lord. Seven days ye must eat unleavened bread. Every single day you need to eat some type of unleavened bread. Every day into the 21st. Verse 7. On the first day ye shall have a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. But ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. First Corinthians chapter five, verse seven. Purge out, therefore, the old leaven. That ye may be a new lump as ye are unleavened. For even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Matthew chapter 26, verse 26 through 28. And as they were eating... Yeshua took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the dis disciples and said, take it, take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many remission of sins. Exodus chapter 23, verse 15. Thou shalt keep the feast of unleavened bread also known as the Feast of Passover or Passover. Thou shalt keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed in the month Abib. For in it thou camest out of Egypt, and none shall appear before me empty. That's the Lord talking. Numbers chapter 9 verse 14. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you. Sojourn means journey. If a stranger, stranger should journey among you. So that means, what do they mean by that? We as the quote unquote black people, not all because you have the tribe of Shem who are black and the tribe of Ham who are black. Not African black, but us black, black, if you will. Are the children of Israel. We are the Lord's children. We are the Lord's jewels. But the stranger that the Lord is talking about is every other race besides us. So that's the tribe of Ham. That's the tribe of uh, Japheth and other families within the Shem tribe. That would include Chinese, Japanese, Taiwanese, Mexican, Latinas, Latinos, um, Hispanics, uh, German and, and French and Ukrainians and Egyptians, every other race but us, white, every other race but us. That's what that means. And if a stranger shall sojourn among you and will keep the Passover unto the Lord. So not only if they're going to be with us, the strangers, these other races, but they have to celebrate this with us. Listen. According to the ordinance of the Passover and according to the manner thereof, so shall he do. Ye shall have one ordinance for both the stranger and for him that was born in the land. We were born in the land of Israel. And for those who are strangers, we are all under the same ordinance, the same law. If you are trying to live for Christ, that means that you celebrate this Passover just like we do. We are all family. We are all one in this. Mark chapter 14, verse 12. Through 25 on the first day of unleavened bread when they killed the Passover his disciples said unto him where would thy where wilt thou that we go and prepare that we may us eat the Passover I want to pause here Christ ate Passover with them listen 
verse 13. And he sendeth forth two of his disciples and saith, go unto them, go ye into the city and there shall meet you a man bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him and whosoever he shall go in, say ye to the good man of the house, the master saith, where is the guest chamber where I shall eat the Passover with my disciples disciples and he will shew you a large upper room furnished and prepared there make ready for us and the disciples went forth and came into the city and found as he had said unto them and they made ready the Passover and in the evening he cometh with the twelve Who's cometh? Who's coming with the twelve? Christ. Christ had his twelve disciples. They made the chamber ready. They setting up the Passover. Christ was eating the Passover with them. So when you see the Last Supper, that's the reference of the of the of the Passover. We're going to talk about this. And as they sat and did eat, Jesus, also known as Christ or the Mashiach or Yeshua or Yehoshua, said, "Verily I say unto you, one of you would." which eateth with me shall betray me. And they begin to be sorrowful and say unto him one by one, is it I? And another said, is it I? And he answered and said unto them, it is one of the 12 that dippeth with me in this dish, in the dish. What is the dish that Christ ate that they were dipping in? So now we're talking about something that is moving now. They're dipping they're dipping. Christ got a revelation that somebody was going to betray him and he told them. This is why he's having his last meal, the last supper. The last supper that he had was the Passover meal. It wasn't Easter and we're going to get to that. I'm going to show you how Easter is fake and I'm going to show you how Christ died on the 14th. Listen. Take notes. Let's read verse 17 and again. And in the evening he cometh with the twelve. And as they sat and did eat, Christ said, Verily I say unto you, One of you which eateth with me shall betray me. Verse 19, And they begin to be sorrowful, and say unto him one by one, Is it I? And another said, Is it I? And he answered and said unto them, It is one of the twelve that dippeth with me in the dish. The Son of Man indeed goeth, as it is written of him. But woe to the man by whom the son of man is betrayed. We know that Judas betray, betrayed Christ. We know that Peter betrayed Christ in a crow. crow. There are times in our lives where we have betrayed Christ. And there's times in our life we betrayed Christ and we didn't ask for forgiveness. If the, if the, pardon me, not the crow, if the uh, cock, if the rooster croaked three times for Peter and, and Peter denied Christ three times, how many times have you denied Christ? How many times would that rooster cock? The son of man indeed goeth as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the son of man is betrayed. Good were it for that man if he had never been born. Verse 22. As they did eat. They did eat what? Christ was eating the Passover. So even Jesus Christ. The son of the heavenly father, Yeshua. Yeshua himself was eating Passover and they did eat. Who ate? The 12 disciples in Christ. Yeshua took bread and blessed and break it and gave to them and said, take, eat. This is my body. And he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they drank of and they all drank of it. And he said unto them, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many. Verily, I say unto you, 
I will drink no more of the fruit of the vine until that day I drink it in the new drink it new in the kingdom of the heavenly father. So that goes to say right there, we're going to have wine in heaven. Christ just told us right there what he's going to be drinking, what he's going to have. And if there's a vine, that means that there's land that it grows from. And if there's land that it goes from, that means that there's a sun that shines on it and there's going to have to be water that rains on it. So what we have here on earth is similar in, <laughs> to the heaven that is up there. Listen to this. First Corinthians chapter five, verse eight. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Exodus chapter 12, verse eight. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread and with bitter herbs. They shall eat it. Verse 28, pardon me, Exodus chapter 12. Um, no, we're not going to read that one. We've read that one sometime. Um, listen to this. Luke 22, verse 15. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Let's read it again, Heavenly Father, Kumbaya. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Christ had the Passover with us before he was crucified. Christ had the Passover with us before he was crucified. Before they put the thorns on his head. Joshua chapter 5 verse 10. And the children of Israel. The children of the world? No. The children of the USA? Nah. The children of Turks and Caicos? Nah. The children of Guam? Mm-mm. -mm. The children of where though? The children of Israel encamped in Gilga and kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. But why is Google telling you that the Passover is on the 15th? It's because they don't want you to, do, to live the scripture. They don't want you to read the scripture. They don't want you to know who you are. They don't want you to listen to the word of the Lord. I want you to listen to this very closely. You're about to find out right now how Christ died on April 14th. The proof is in the scripture. In order for you to notice, you're going to have to pay attention closely. And you may want to take note. You may want to pause and rewind as needed. Listen very closely. We're reading from John chapter 13 verse 1 and verse 2 verse 1 and verse 2 from John chapter 13 now before the feast of the Passover when Christ knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the father having loved his own which were in the world he loved them until the end. He loved us until the end. And supper being ended.
the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Christ had Passover with us. Christ ate Passover with us, even though he knew he was about to die. Now, before the feast of Passover, when Yeshua knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world into the Father, it was before the meal that Christ knew that he was about to die. And knowing that he was about to die, he decided to eat with us anyway. Verse 2, and supper being ended. So when it says supper being ended, that means that Christ ate. Christ ate. Let's go to Luke chapter 22, verse 15 as a refresher. How do we know that Christ ate? In Luke chapter 22, verse 15, Christ says this. Yeshua says this. Verse 15. And he said unto them, with desire, I have desired to eat this Pass over with you before I suffer. Hallelujah, Lord. <sighs> Our Father in heaven decided to eat with us before he died, and he knew that somebody was betraying him. He knew before he ate that somebody was going to betray him. He loved us until the end. He loved us until the end. John chapter 13 verse 2 again. And supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot. It's very important that you show yourself approve with scripture because when the bible gives names the bible is giving you names for a reason and the bible is very clear on who this person is if the bible is giving you first and last name you better pay attention because we're looking at some serious information right now it was judas iscariot that betrayed christ so if you had a pop quiz in heaven and if the Lord said, I'll forgive all of your sins, forget everything that you did. I don't care if you were a murderer, a whore, a stealer, embezzler, whatever you did, I'll forget everything right now. But you answer me this one question. Which Judas was it that betrayed Christ? Did you know that there's two, two Judases in the Bible? You got Judas Iscariot. Who got carried away with sin. Like a chariot, <laughs> a burning chariot. He got carried away with sin and he betrayed Christ. Let's go and find out who this other Judas is because you need to know this. This is very important. You may or you may not know this information, but you need to know this. There is another Judas. So you got the Judas that we know that is a betrayer. And you got the Judas that you're about to find out about now. First and last names are extremely important in the Bible. You need to look very close. You know Cain, but you don't know his last name. We know Adam and Eve, but we don't know no last name, right? We know Noah, but we don't know no last name. So they're giving Judas as Cariot. You got to be like, why, why are they saying this Cariot? Because the scripture wants you to know his full name. Listen to this. Maccabees chapter 3 verse 23. Then his son Judas called Maccabeus rose up to his stead. So there was a Judas named Maccabeus. Judas Maccabeus. And all his brother, brethren helped him. And so they did all that they had held with his father. And they fought with chilfulness in the battle of Israel. So he got his people great honor and put on the breastplate as a giant and his girth and his girt and his 
girt his warlike harness was a harness about him and he made battles protecting the host with his sword and the axe he was like a lion and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey he pursued the wicked and sought them out so let's pause there this Judas Maccabeus he was a warrior so when it says that he pursued the wicked, if you're pursuing the wicked, that means you got to be righteous. So the, the Judas Maccabeus was a righteous man. Because it says that he pursued the wicked in this war. When you get into this reading, but we're not going to get into this entire reading right now. I'll just read one more, just precept upon precept. We're going to read from Maccabees chapter 2, and we'll read from verse 8. No, we'll read from, uh, we'll read chapter 8, verse 1. Then Judas Maccabeus, they're giving us first and last name. There's a Judas Iscariot. Who is that? Judas Iscariot? Refresher. He betrayed Christ. Who is Judas Maccabeus that we know? Judas Maccabeus was a good man because he pursued the wicked. Now let's read this other precept. Chapter 8 of 2 Maccabees, verse 1. Then Judas Maccabeus and they that were with him went privily into the towns and called their kinfolks together and took unto them all such as continued in the Jews religion and assembled about 6,000 men and they called upon the Lord that he would look upon the people that was trodden down of all and also pity the temple profaned of ungodly men and that he would have compassion upon the city sore the face ready to be made even with the ground. This Judas Maccabeus was a good man. He was a warrior. He had a hatred for evil. This also goes about this whole thing of us taking our kingdom back. When they, again, defiled our kingdoms, having sex with prostitutes in our temples and things. It sounds like Judas Maccabeus was a part of this war. Let's read a little bit more. That he would look upon the people trodden down of all and also pity the temple profaned of ungodly men and that would have compassion upon the city sore to face and ready to be made even with the ground and hear the blood that cried unto him and remember the wicked slaughter of harmless infants and the blasphemies committed against his name and he would show his hatred against the wicked. They're doing the same stuff they're doing today. Back then, they were harming babies. They were making blasphemies and things of the such. This is Judas Maccabeus was a good man, but Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot betrayed Christ. Listen to this. John chapter 18, verse 28. Then they led Christ from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. You're about to find out right now how Easter is bad. Easter is pagan. And it was early. Okay, let's pause. The, the, the story that we're about to read is after the supper, after the last supper, after the Passover, these people came and got Christ. And they took them in this judgment hall, like around the Pharisees and like piling in them to judge him. To, you know, ask him all these questions and all this stuff and to prepare to crucify him. Now. It says it was early when they did this. It says, and it was early and they themselves went not into the judgment hall lest they should be defiled. 
but that they might eat the Passover. So we're talking about Passover time right now. It was still during Passover time when all of this was happening. After they after Christ stopped eating, Judas betrayed. They found out, you know what I mean? And then they came and got Christ. Here it is. Here it is. Hold on. Hold on. Where's the Easter part? We're going we're gonna to get to this. Hold on one second, y'all. Let me. All right. Here it is right here. Here's how Easter is paganistic. It's fake. And you don't need to celebrate it. Nobody ever need to celebrate it. We don't do that. Acts chapter 12, verse 4. Easter is in the Bible one time. And the time that is in here is not even good. It's only in here one time. Acts chapter 12, verse 4. Why don't they read this on Easter? It's in the Bible. And why don't they read the full thing in context and read precept upon precept? Because they're part of a 501c3 and they're not supposed to tell you the truth. They get their hands dirty to keep the truth away from you just so they can have tax free money. Listen to this. And when they had apprehended him, we're still talking about a Passover now. When they had apprehended him. He put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Listen, when they locked Christ up and they put him in prison, they had four prison guards watching him. And not only that, they didn't plan to bring Christ out until after Easter because Easter was a celebration for the people. They came and got Christ on the day of Passover. They came and got Christ on the day of the new year on the 14th. That's when they came and got Christ. If Easter wasn't paganistic and if it wasn't their holiday, then they would have just do it on Easter if that was the best day, right? But they tricked you. They made you think that dying eggs and bunnies, you haven't even looked it up yet, have you? What Easter really mean, what the name of it mean? Istar and Tammuz and Samaritus and all that. You should look that up. Easter is paganistic. And if you're celebrating it, you need to stop. Christ died on April 14th, the day of Passover. And the proof is in the scripture. We're not reading music tonight. Get saved. Stay prayed up. Keep the most high first. Stay tuned for the next Real TV. I love you.